Let's talk about capacitive reactants. We know the uh, from our earlier work with capacitors and even just uh, considering uh, DC circuits that have capacitors in them that the current across a capacitor is equal to the capacitance of it times the rate of change of the voltage. And of course where this comes from is that the charge in the capacitor equals its capacitance times the voltage and current that's using calculus now that's the instantaneous rate of charge per time so current is dq dt then I have to take the derivative of this side of the equation with respect to time the capacitance that's just a constant number so then it is dv dt. So that's how we get the equation for the uh, current going across a capacitor. I don't mind to say going across a capacitor because that doesn't physically happen, but it is as if it's happening. Remember we have, say, a pair of plates like this, and we just have it hooked up, say, to a battery. then what happens is from the negative terminal electrons start to accumulate here and then on this plate from the this plate that's hooked to the negative terminal of the battery then for this plate that's hooked to the positive terminal of the battery electrons leave here and go to the positive terminal of the battery. So you have electrons leaving the negative terminal. They accumulate on this plate. Simultaneously, electrons leave the metal plate here and go to the positive terminal of the battery. So it's as if we had a complete circuit. Uh, but what exactly, what other relationships can we derive between the current in the capacitor and the voltage and that's what we want to look at in this video and also what resistance would a capacitor have so again its current is C dV dt and let's say we have an alternating current source say V equals as you've seen us write in the other in the previous videos now EM times the sine of omega t. If this is the voltage, then what is the current? Of course, IC, that equals this. And now I have to take the derivative of this. So the derivative of this expression right here, with respect to t, this comes out. We have omega of course, that's a constant. And then we have the derivative here, that is plus the cosine of omega t. And again, we're, we're using some simple calculus now. All we're saying is that the derivative with respect to time that equals this goes out EM was a constant so that stays just unchanged and the derivative of the cosine is plus the sine the derivative of the sine is plus the cosine omega t which is what we have written right here so this is the current notice that then if the voltage, the alternating voltage is a sine wave, then the current, the capacitor current, is a cosine wave. And remember uh, from trigonometry, if we have the sine of 
um, say an angle theta, and we add pi over 2, that is equal to the sine of theta times the cosine of pi over 2. Now this is in radians, or it could be 90 degrees either way. We'll clarify that more in, in just a moment. It'll be a sine cosine plus cosine theta sine pi over 2. This we're expressing in radians, but pi over 2, that's the same thing as 90 degrees. So if we want, we can just say 90 degrees is the same thing. Then here we'd say 90. And likewise here. Well, the cosine of 90 degrees is 0, and the sine of 90 degrees, that's 1. So this is equal to, this is just 1. Don't need to have that there. This is 0, so the sine of theta plus 90 is the cosine. So that tells us then that if the voltage is a sine wave, we know the current is a cosine wave, or we can say that the current equals omega C E M times the sine of omega t plus 90 degrees. So we see that this would be the voltage, this is the current, and the current leads the voltage by 90 degrees. Now that's what happens when the voltage is a sine wave. What happens if the voltage that we apply follows a cosine wave? Let's take that situation. So instead of a sine, here we have a cosine. Omega t. Now, again, of course, it's the same setup. The current equals c. Now we have to take the derivative with respect to time, though. of this expression, Em times the cosine of omega t. And this equals, this is just a constant. This comes out, so we have omega e. And the derivative of the cosine is minus the sine. So this would be minus the sine. of omega t. So here then our expression for current that has c, now dv dt, that's this. So we have minus omega, that should be e maximum, and here minus omega e maximum times the sine of omega t. So if our input voltage is a cosine wave, then the current is a negative sine wave. But now here we want to remember again from trigonometry that the cosine, say of theta, plus pi over 2, or theta plus 90 degrees, we can express it in degrees if we want to, that is equal to the cosine of theta times the cosine of 90 degrees minus the sine of theta times the sine. 90 degrees. And again, the cosine of 90 degrees, that's 0. 
the sine of 90 degrees, that's 1. So this is equal to minus the sine of theta. And going back to here then, this was the cosine of omega t. Here we have minus the sine of omega t. So what we can say then is that IC equals, and then here we have omega C E. Then we could say times the cosine of omega T plus 90 degrees. Because this is the same thing as, and that's what we had right here, is minus the sine. So again, we see that if the input voltage is a cosine wave, the capacitive current is a cosine wave leading it by 90 degrees. So regardless of whether our input voltage is a sine wave, or whether our input voltage is a cosine wave, it doesn't matter. We see that the current leads the voltage by 90 degrees. And we can sort of, I guess, justify this uh, physically. Again, if we have a capacitor, just say just two metal plates, and we hook these up to a battery, then what happens? Electrons leave this negative terminal and the electrons start to accumulate on this plate. And then as they're doing that, electrons up here leave this plate and travel to the positive terminal of the battery. So we do have a complete circuit in a sense, but of course as more current flows, more charges accumulate. When more charges accumulate, the voltage increases. But you can see first you have to have a current. Then, as a result of the current with these accumulated charges, then the voltage gets bigger. So you can sort of understand physically then why the current would be ahead of the voltage. Now, there's another aspect of this that we can look at. Um, if the current or the voltage that we used was a sine wave, then the capacitive current I see that was equal to omega C E M and that was times the cosine of omega T. What would be the maximum current we could have? Of course, the maximum value that this can have is 1. So the maximum current that we could have that would equal omega C times EM. like this, or we could express it a different way. The maximum current, I max, we say that equals omega C times the maximum value of the voltage. This is the voltage input. The maximum value this can have, of course, is EM, because the maximum value the sine wave can have is 1. Or we could write it like this, I max, 
that will equal E divided by 1 over omega C. This and this are algebraically uh, equivalent, but now we're used to thinking of current is equal to a voltage divided by a resistance. So 1 over omega C can be interpreted as a resistance factor and this is what is called the capacitive reactance. And right here is where it comes from then, these types of considerations. And if our um, input voltage was a cosine wave instead, it comes out to be, it comes out to exactly the same formula. So 1 over omega C, that is the capacitive reactance. We'll make use of this in our future videos. That's all I want to say during this video. Um, in the next video, we'll try to take a look at inductive reactants. And I think this is video number 78, I guess, in our um, series on electrical circuits. Anyway, the playlist for all the videos is at the uh, website, digital-university.org.